let me let me start off with this. Stories like this, stories like the one I'm like the one I'm going to read here shortly, is the reason why I go so hard on African uh, politics and African just the way shit is ran in Africa in general. This is why I go so hard. And this is why when I get these goofy disclaimers, these African disclaimers, Dinus, calm down. Dinus, there's a process. Dinus, you have to be patient. Dinus, you have to do this. Dinus, you can't do that. This is why 99.9, well, 97% of the, the disclaimers I get, I ignore. I always tell the story. First time I went to Africa back in 2011, I told my friend, my African immigrant friend, that I was going to Africa. He said, Dinus, I am so happy you are going to Africa. But you black Americans, you cannot be militant. You, there is no racism in Africa. There is no racism. You cannot be militant. There is no racism in Africa. I go to Tanzania. The Indians there were racist as hell. The Indians there were, were militant as hell. But damn it, I guess the Indians didn't get the disclaimer. Certain parts of Kenya, the white expats are militant as hell. But you know what? They don't get the, the don't be militant disclaimer. South Africa, the whites are militant as hell. The whites are racist, racist as hell. The Indians as well. But they're, they're still not getting the disclaimer. In West Africa, the Lebanese are racist as hell and militant as hell. But they're not getting this, getting the disclaimer. But for some reason, the ADOS, we get the disclaimer for some odd reason. That's why half the shit they tell me, I just ignore. You know, half the disclaimers they give me, I completely ignore. I don't want to hear it. All the way to if I'm at an event and I'm taking uh, photos at a, at a festival in Africa and I'm taking photos and they tell me that I need to get a uh, some type of badge or permit, I ignore them. Because I'm telling you, the white people be all, listen, white people at these cultural and uh, at these festivals in Africa, I mean, they be all in there with their iPads, their phones, photos all up in the people's faces and they don't get questioned for nothing. Some do, because I, I got on to security Say so you need to question these white folks too. They're like, oh, okay, brother, okay. So I get on them too. But again, it is getting better since I've been stepping foot on the continent. It's been getting better. The cooning has somewhat it is getting better because I be checking people. So, but again, this is why I ignore half of these how to conduct yourself disclaimers in Africa. This is why. Let me read this article. Ghana, I mean, China ready to help Ghana combat illegal mining. Let me translate this for you. Ghana is going to allow the, the Chinese criminals, the, the criminals to handle their own Chinese criminal investigations. This is equivalent to say there's an unarmed black man who gets shot by the police. And of course, in a black community, we ask for transparency. You need to be transparent, have a third party, you know, or now it's really not even a third party. It's uh, what's the term? The jury, the uh, something jury. I forgot the term. But then, you know, the police say, you know what? Don't worry about it. We are going to handle our own. We're going to have our own internal investigation. We're not going to have a jury, no third party judge, no nothing. Just imagine, again, an unarmed black man being shot by the police. And then the police saying, you know what? We're going to have our own internal investigation. We're going to take care of it. How do you think that's going to turn out? Well, usually it's a uh, suspension would pay. That's how it happens. No criminal charges, no nothing. So China ready to help Ghana combat illegal mining. So you're trying to tell me, Ghana. That you yourself cannot stop the legal mining in China. I mean, I'm sorry, in Ghana. The Chinese are illegally mining. And you're trying to tell me that Ghanaians need the criminals to help them stop the criminals 
from Illegally Mighty. Guys, this is what we're dealing with. That's why I go so hard and I don't want to hear none of these Afropean disclaimers. All right. The deputy head, the deputy ahead of Mission Embassy of China, Mr. Zhu Jing, has said it is important for Accra to collaborate with Beijing to present to combat to combat illegal mining with a common agenda. So, damn it, they're telling them China is telling Ghana that you guys need to report to us. OK. On how. You need to, so basically China's telling Ghana, Ghana, you need to report to us Chinese criminals. So we can come up with some plan to help us Chinese criminals to stop illegally mining. Well, I mean, I, I just need help. Where's the logic in that? He said the two countries must not allow their issue of illegal mining to damage their mutual warm relationship. So basically, look, uh, black African Ghanaian. We know we illegally mining. We know we doing it. But damn it, just let that shit go. OK, so what we're going to do. Present some type of uh, if, uh, uh, you know, some type of agenda to us. And we'll take it from that. that that's what that's what the Chinese are telling Ghana right now. Bring some agenda to us and we'll take it from there. God, God, this is what's going on in Ghana right now. Mr. G made the statement on Monday in Accra during a roundtable discussion on illegal mining hosted by the Institute of Economic, of Economic Affairs. So, guys, basically, China called, you know, the 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 uh, deputies or the you know the representatives of of the mining industry or the government of Ghana called them and said, "Hey, look, Ghanaians, we know we illegally mining. We know we're doing it." So what we need you to do, uh, Mr. Ghanaian ambassador, uh, we need to, you guys to present an agenda to us, Chinese who are illegally mining, and we'll take it from there. Just, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. We'll take it from there. We know that us, Ch us Chinese are illegally mining on your sovereign land, but allow us to handle the investigations of foreign country, China, let us take care of it on your sovereign land. So we'll, we'll take it from here. The Chinese government, he said, respected and supported the Ghanaian government in the efforts to solve the problem in accordance with laws and regulations. Now, Ghanaians, say there's a Nigerian that's illegally mining in Ghana. Do you think the Ghanaians are going to collab with the Nigerians? You think Ghana is going to partner with the Nigerian government to stop the Nigerian illegal mining? Those Nigerians are getting kicked out, are arrested, put in prison and kicked out. They're not going to consult with the Nigerian government or anything. But for some reason, when the Chinese illegally mine, the Chinese pick up the phone and say, hey, Ghanaian ambassador at the, yeah, Ghanaian ambassador, we need you to put together an agenda and give it to us and we'll implement it ourselves. The Chinese government will implement it uh, on sovereign Ghanaian land and we'll take it from there. And if we need anything, we'll let you know. Mr. Jean said his government formally opposed any Chinese national engaging in illegal mining in Ghana. Today, I'm here not for blaming. OK, so listen, 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 so listen, listen, listen to this, guys. Today, I'm here not for blaming. OK, so basically the Chinese who have been illegally mining in Ghana, we're not going to hold them accountable. We're not. It's just, you know, it's, it's whatever. But we just, you know, want a good under. Read. I'm, I'm gonna let me finish this today. I'm here. I am here, not for blaming, but for some good understanding of illegal mining and its role in China Ghana relations. So basically, they want to sit down and have a council, 
you know, uh, listen, okay, we know we're illegally mining in Ghana, but you know, let's just, you know, let's just talk it out. Let's just talk it out. You know, we're gonna continue to legally mine. You know, let's just, it's gonna continue to happen. But what can we do? I mean, Ghana, how much more can we shove our, you know, our fist up your ass? I mean, how much more room do you guys have so we can continue to F you guys? Like how much more, I mean, can you take it to the elbow? Or should we stop like right here at the farm? Like how far up can we go, Ghana, in effing you? Like, I mean, okay, our, now right now we're right here. Can we put our elbow, can we go up to your elbow or should we stop right there? You know, cause I mean, we're gonna continue to screw you. But in reality, see the Chinese who are illegally mining in Ghana, we are the real, this, this is what this is. The Chinese feel as if they are the victims in this situation. They're the victims. So listen, we're not here to blame. We know that we're effing you guys, Ghana. We know we're effing you guys. But how much more can we F you guys? And please don't blame us for effing you guys. You know, because again, we, we, we mean well when we F you guys. I mean, we don't want this to ru ru ruin our relationship because we're going to continue to screw you guys. So again, right here to right here or right here when we F you? Or can we meet in middle ground right here? So in between the forearm and the elbow bone joint? Or maybe we'll just stop right here in between, you know, like the end of the, where the forearm meets the elbow joint. Like we'll stop right there, Ghana. And Ghana's like, okay. Um, the mainstream of the China-Ghana relations was the win-win co cooperation, he stated. See, it's a win-win. So when China screws Ghana, it's a win-win. China now is the biggest trading partner and also the main source of investment for Ghana. So basically what they're saying is us Ghanaians, we have no integrity and we are going to allow China to screw us. That's what that I'm reading this word for word. I'm translating it for you guys. The discussion dubbed the Gollum Sea menace in Ghana. So Gollum Sea is another word for illegal mining. The way forward. So basically, look. Illegal mining is illegal mining is continue to go, is going to continue to be a problem, but let's continue to move forward. But if this was Nigerians doing this, this would have been done. In fact, they probably would have kicked the Nigerian uh, ambassador out of Ghana. It was chaired by Nana Kobina Ngetsia V Omahin of SC Kado traditional area in the Western region. It was attended by the stakeholders in the mining industry, members of parliament, members of the diplomatic community, civil society organizations, academia, and the public. So basically all your uh, Ghanaian intellectuals, they were all there. They were all, all your Ghanaian intellectuals that you know have their PhDs and their doctorates, they were all there to, they were all present to discuss how China, you know, can, continue to screw you guys and put their arms and their fists up up you know what and let's see let's see here so we'll allow the chinese to stop right here not the whole not to the elbow joint but to right here so you guys have to bring your academia in your in your um you know all your well educated ghanaians with their american and british degrees to this summit to figure out how far they're going to allow the Chinese to screw you guys. The panel members included Professor Solomana Al Hassan uh, of the University of Mines and Technology and Mr. Kenneth Ashigbi Kavener, Media Coalition Against Gollumsey. Mr. Jing, however, noted that the root cause of illegal small scale mining was in Ghana. Likewise, okay, Mr. Jing, however, noted that the root cause of illegal small scale mining was in Ghana. Likewise, is the solution. He said the menace, which had a long history, had caused a huge damage to the environment. So the Chinese are in Ghana, damaging your environment, illegally mining, stealing your gold and diamonds, whatever it is. But you got, there are people, Ghanaians, Africans, who want to sit here and uh, they just want to argue. They just want to. Gollum say, okay, I'm sorry. They just want to argue on how the Chinese are our business partners. The Chinese are our business partners. 
the Chinese are our business partners. They are our friends. Let's see here. For centuries, he said illegal mining had been curated with the livelihood of the Ghanaian people, while it formed a very compl complicated interest to lean on. So this is the fundamental reasons why this problem could not be solved after so many years, he, he noted. So again, he's putting the blame on Ghana. OK, so now, now listen, the guy just said he's not going to blame anybody. But now he's I, and, I, and guys, I promise you, this is the first time I'm reading this full article. Like I said at the beginning, he's going to make it seem as if the Chinese are the victims. And that's what he did. But again, you guys have your Ghanaian intellectuals there and they're just like, OK, it's whatever. So this is the fundamental reasons why this problem cannot be solved after so many years, he noticed. So basically what he said is the Ghanaians, in order to survive, they had to illegally mine. So it's really a Ghanaian issue. And damn it, don't you blame us Chinese because we're going to continue to screw you guys regardless. Uh, Mr. Jing says, since I started my posting in Ghana a few, few months ago, I have visited a few mining sites. Although I did see any gold, you know, I was deeply shocked by the damage of illegal mining on the water and the soil. In my mind, illegal mining menace must be stopped through effective solution. Why can't Ghanaians handle their own mining? I mean, Ghanaians, Nigerians, you guys are so educated. You come to America and the UK and get all your degrees and degrees. I, why do you need China to come by? Let's see. And in my mind, illegal mining menace must be stopped through the effective solution. We should up a window while closing a door, create more jobs for those miners and guide them to work legally and change their old way of life. He said China's position on opposing illegal mining was very clear cut and have been very constant. Shit. The Chinese government has dispatched several working groups to come to Ghana. Different groups have their different aims, sometimes to persuade the local Chinese to go back to China, among other solutions. So instead of punishing the Chinese illegal miners, this is I'm going to translate this for you. Hey, guys, look, you're legally mining. Just go back to China. Don't hold them accountable. Don't punish them. But damn it, if they, these were Nigerians, they will be under the jail. Our embassy has also mobilized the Chinese community here in Ghana not to participate in illegal mining. And we have issued many relevant cautionary reminders many times, he added. He said currently due to joint efforts by China and Ghana, the number of the Chinese illegal miners have been declining and that many of them had already left Ghana. So the legal, see, the Chinese illegal miners, they have an option to leave Ghana. No jail time, no punishment. They have an option to leave. But again, if this was your black ass illegally mining in uh, Ghana, you would be under the jail. The key to solving the problem lies with Ghana, not China. Those Chinese illegal miners will not come all the way to Ghana without the facilitation, support, and shelter from the local people, he said. Again, like I said, they are going to make it seem as if the Chinese are the victims. I told you guys that. I, this is the, I promise you this is the first time reading this article. Again, he said he's not going to blame anybody, but I told you he's going to make it seem as if the, 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 the Chinese are the victims and the Ghanaians are the, 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 the problem. We should punish not only the Chinese illegal miners, but also their Ghanaian supporters behind. Mr. Jean said tracking down the Chinese illegal miners alone while neglecting the supporters could not solve this complicated problem. He said for the Chinese side, he was ready to cooperate with their Ghanaian side in solving illegal mining problems. However, they were also facing some daunting challenges, one of which was the inadequate and incomplete legal foundation. Foreigners are exclusively prohibited to engage in small scale mining, according to the Mineral and Mining Act 2006, he said. However, foreigners are allowed to provide mining support services to a holder of a mining right, according to Mineral and Ming Support Services, uh, Mineral and Mining, sorry, Mineral and Mining Support Services Regulation 2012. Mr. Jing said that in practice, it was very difficult to tell what was small scale mining from what was support services, adding that. This leaves a huge loophole for foreigners to engage in illegal mining. He said the other challenge was the dilemma of environmental distraction and re rehabilitation. Rehabilitation. 
excuse me for butchering that word. The Chinese side is willing to stress on cooperation with the Ghanaian side over issues of environmental degradation, degradation and provide relevant technical assistance. However, before we devote ourselves to environment governance, we should solve the problem of illegal mining. Otherwise, the efforts efforts will lead to nowhere. So that's the article. But again, you got Africans, the Chinese are a friend. The Chinese are our business partners. We need China, even though we have all these degrees. We come to America, we have all these degrees. But damn it, we need China to mine. We need China to do this. We need China for that. This is what you're dealing with. But Ghanaian, you go to China and do something illegal and see what type of diplomacy you'll get. They will put you under the prison. But when Chinese come to Africa and do illegal stuff, they get all type of diplomacy and checks and balances. And we got to cover this, cover that. And make sure we're doing this right. But you, I mean, why do you think people like Water Maya, these Africans live in China on pins and needles? They go to China, live on pins and needles, afraid to do anything wrong. You know, a Chinese man yells at them. They're, they're afraid to even defend themselves. But then, it, damn it, Chinese, Chinese can come to Africa and just run wild. I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. Well, Stephon Marbury is a rich NBA player. You know, they love athletes. That's pretty much consistent. If you're an entertainer or athlete, you're a god. But the regular man, oh, yeah, you're, yeah, whatever. I'm just saying. If you're a Ghanaian, go to China and do something illegal and see the diplomacy you'll get. They will put you under the prison. That's why these African immigrants, when they go to China, they live on pins and needles. When they go to India, they live on pins and needles. Because they know even if the Indian yells at them, spits in their face, same thing with the Chinese, they can't do anything. But the Chinese, Indians, they can do anything they want in Africa and get away with it. That's all I'm saying. But again, this is my point. When I get these African disclaimers, you know, Dinah, you need to handle yourself differently. You need to be more diplomatic. Oh, Dinah, you can't do that. You can't do this. You need to be friendly. You need to do that. You need to do this. Oh, Dinah, you can't have that. It doesn't work like that. You can't be milit militant like that. There's no racism in Africa. I just ignore for this reason right here. For this very reason right here, shout out to Vernell Sexton for the uh, super chat. Shout out to Mr. Grandeur uh, for the super chat. And, and we, we are going to do another embassy calling show, by the way. Maybe tomorrow. It's, it's already five. But we, grand jury, I'm sorry, grand jury. But we will definitely do um, another, uh, like, what the hell is a grand jury? But the Chinese don't even get a grand jury. They they do whatever they want. I'm just saying. But yeah, I just I just had to share this article with you guys. I just had to share this with you guys. Yeah, out of these Africans come in the in the in the comments, and you need to do this, you need to do that. Dinosaur, oh, you black Americans, you you know, you guys have this, you guys have this attitude, this, that. Oh, shut up. That's why I ignore everything you guys say. Guys, we will be doing another embassy calling show tomorrow. We will definitely be doing another embassy calling show. We couldn't get anybody on the phone. You know I mean, we got some people on the, we got some people on the phone. No, we, we're doing another calling embassy show. Definitely. Yeah, and, and I think the guy, in fact, the Ghanaian, the Indians told Ghana to put up that um, Ghani statue, put back up the Ghani statue. 
Oh, we're going to do it tomorrow. In fact, guys, tomorrow we will do another embassy calling show probably about. Huh, not do it in the morning. No, no, no. Probably about 11, 15, 11, 30. We're going to do another. Uh, we're going to do another embassy calling show. Definitely. We will definitely be doing some more embassy calling shows because I need the answers. I need the answers. Okay. Appreciate it, Carl and I, y'all. Appreciate it. Okay, so we'll do it around. If, okay, so we'll do it after lunch. That'll probably be about, well, see, the thing is, I think they go to lunch like around 1 o'clock. From what I've been noticing, they go to lunch at 1. But we will definitely be doing another embassy calling show. No doubt. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you go to search for Uhuru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Please share. Please like. Till next time, family. Please subscribe. Till next time. Peace.